Hi, welcome to the channel! Full frame cameras have been the preserve of pro photographers relied upon for its image quality, greater flexibility, and depth of field control. iPhone has the distinction of being the most popular camera, and the iPhone 11 has been garnering rave reviews for its low light performance. So, if the discussions on the internet are any indication, many have been asking, how does the image quality of the iPhone stack up against full frame cameras? Is the gap still far, especially in low light conditions? Or has mobile technology finally caught up? So that's what we're going to find out in today's video. So these are the two contenders. You, we're going to be comparing the iPhone 11 with the Sony A7S with the Zeiss 24 to 70 f4. So you can see that the iPhone 11 weighs around 194 grams while the Sony A7S uh, with the lens would weigh over 900 grams. So a big weight difference. We try to shoot it with the same focal length uh, which is around 26 millimeters for the iPhone 11 and 24 millimeters for the Zeiss lens. And the iPhone 11 was released in 2019 and the Sony uh, A7S was released quite a bit back in 2014. Okay, so here are the two images side by side. So what I'm noticing here, uh, the lens of the Sony has a slighter wider focal length, okay? But I am seeing that for the iPhone 11, the buildings here on the right side are a little bit better exposed than the Sony's. The shadows have been brought up. And this is not edited, this is straight from the camera. So the buildings at the background here are better exposed than the Sony's. And that has to do with the, the processing that has been done. Okay, so this particular image was shot with the Sony A7S with the Zeiss lens, the F4. So again, same thing, the auto will choose 1 over 60 second shutter speed with an ISO of 4000. Similar values to the previous photo. So that is for the Sony A7S and let's look at the iPhone. You can see 3 times slower shutter speed. The exposures are roughly the same. Okay, so here are the two images side by side. For the Sony A7S, you can see that because it was a dark scene with a lot of artificial light, the white balance is a little bit on the warmer side. This is basically the auto white balance result. You can see from the iPhone 11, colors are better. And you can see that this foreground with the bicycle is better exposed. It has this less reddish color balance. Um, with, you can see the grass here. You can see the greens of the grass more prominently and it stands out a little bit better. Okay, so here's another shot. And again, you can see the white balance and the colors of the iPhone look better. Um, the shadows are a bit better exposed. Let's look at another shot. This is a daytime shot just to show you it's, only, it's not only at night where uh, this processing has improved. So you can see for the A7S, if you look at the shadows out of the box, they're much darker. The iPhone 11 has much more detail. But you will notice in the sky, the A7S is actually uh, washed out, right? There's not much detail here in the shadow. Okay, so this is shot one after the other. And you can see also in this building, this thing is very much overexposed to the street as well. But for the iPhone 11, it is able to actually bring back detail in the sky. This was very impressive because this is a very bright scene. And uh, my older iPhones wouldn't be able to capture the scene properly. Here's another night scene. So iPhone 11 at the right. Um, what I'm noticing here is, aside from the color, which seems to be present in all the night shots, you can also see here the cloud here in the night sky are more detailed. So it gives that balance into the shot. But here on the iPhone, you see that it's nicely balanced because the shadows here have been lit. The processing was done such that it's able to bring out this sort of shadow detail in the clouds. And if you actually look a bit closer, you can see that the, the spotlight of the moon is actually smaller. So it sort of detects that very bright spot um, is able to lessen you know, the overexposure of the moon. It's very interesting the way it looks. And again, in this very dark scene, you can see that the noise is uh, very well controlled. I'm looking at it very closely and I don't really see much of a difference. In fact, the iPhone 11 shot is, doesn't seem noisy or soggy from noise reduction. It's very well detailed. Here's another example. You see, you can see the wide difference in color. The, the color here of this building, the greens are brought out a little bit more. The highlights 
are controlled a little bit better here on the iPhone 11. The building once again on this right side is much better exposed which balances the shot really well. So the iPhone 11 seems to know which parts require a little bit more uh, exposure. So here's another image again a big difference here right this image is way too orange this is right next to a lamppost and uh, for some reason uh, the a7s make it very warm again you have to remember that this is a 2014 full frame i guess you have to do tests on newer full frames whether they have corrected this problem but uh, here in uh, iphone 11 look how nice the rendition is you also see the blues come out here or it is highlighted very well the trees here the detail in these trees if you actually look closely very nicely done the final shot here is again another very dark scene what i'm looking at here in the a7s the lights here are somehow overexposed you can see all the whites and the moon the spotlight is, is quite large compare it to the iphone 11 look at how well controlled the lights here this is very impressive to me right that you can see the detail right in this spot Okay. See, it's not over, it's not so white as here here you can actually uh, see the details uh, and there's even the moon itself look how much smaller the moon is meaning it's trying to control the light the exposure of the moon right so parts which need to be exposed or given less exposure are done in that way it sort of understands which parts need less exposure and which parts need more I, I would suspect most people will say this is the better image. The iPhone 11's image is the better image. So when I saw these results, I was certainly surprised. I did not expect the iPhone 11 to outperform a camera which I go to for the best quality. And now I'm seeing that iPhone 11 with a much smaller sensor um, giving even better quality. So we have to ask the question, what is the reason? Well, after a little bit of research, the answer actually lies in the keynote of the iPhone XS where Phil Schiller talked about what makes their photography um, so good. So there you have it. The A13 Bionic is the reason why the photography is so good. It enhances these images that are coming out of the sensor image signal processor working together with the CPU does so many things for the photo. I understand for iPhone 11 does 5 trillion operations. Uh, when iPhone XS was launched it was 1 trillion. Now it's 5 trillion operations. So there's a lot of AI to help detect the scene. For example, it sees oh, there are bright spots here. There are overexposed spots. So why don't we correct this? So it can detect phases and bodies and understand the scene that is shooting. Another big thing which makes the iPhone photo so good is that it has the smart HDR on by default. In the old iPhones, you had to switch it on. But now it is on by default. So, so it's actually merging the best parts of multiple images. And that is why it's able to control highlights and shadows. Basically give an image much better dynamic range. As you can see, the highlights are so much more well controlled even compared to a full frame. So what's the bottom line? I have to say I was surprised. iPhone 11 with its computational photography has caught up to even high-end cameras in difficult scenes. It gets harder and harder to justify plugging a bulky camera in a bulky lens when a pocket camera will do the same or better job. This will likely be yet another impetus for the general public to move to smartphone photography as camera sales continue to lose market share. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel and smash that like button. Till the next video, happy shooting!